Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series. And in this video, uh, we're going to start the process of actually deploying an application to Kubernetes. So I'm going to break this down into three videos. Um, so in this video, what we're actually going to do um, is download some application code from GitHub. Uh, we're going to, then going to run that code locally as a Node.js executable. Then we're going to create a Docker container, and then we're going to run uh, the application under Docker on my local machine. So in this video, we're not actually going to be touching IBM Cloud, uh, but you do need to have Docker installed on your laptop or your local machine. You'll also need to uh, have Node.js installed, especially if you're going to uh, follow along and uh, run the code under the Node.js executable. So without further ado, let's switch over to GitHub. Okay, so here I am in my GitHub repository. So I'm at uh, github.com slash James Belton IBM. So if you want to uh, go to there and, and find my repository, then if I click um, repositories, um, and then if I just scroll down slightly, and I want this one called Node S2I OpenShift. So let's just click in there. Uh, so this is the application code that we're actually going to be using. Now, um, I didn't originally write um, this particular application. It's an application that's been used um, across IBM really for demonstrating features of Kubernetes, but also OpenShift as well. So hence the uh, uh, the OpenShift in the in the code title. So, uh, but we're actually going to be using this code to um, to actually deploy onto our Kubernetes uh, infrastructure and make a container out of. So first thing we need to do is actually get the code. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, you can either press the code button here and um, actually uh, download it. So you can download it with a zip file. So just download it to your machine as a zip file and then unzip it into a uh, into a directory that you want to use. Or the other thing you can do is actually clone it as well. So if you've got git clone or git on your installed on your machine, you can actually clone it. And that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is just copy this to the to the uh, to my clipboard. And then I'm going to uh, go to a terminal window. And I've already created um, a directory that I'm going to put this into. It's my Kubernetes demo. So I'm just going to type in git clone and uh, then the uh, that, that link to the repository. So what that's now doing is actually downloading the code for me. Uh, and you can see that's now done. So if I just do an ls and list it, you can see I've got this directory here, node two, uh, node s2i openshift. And then if I just cd into there and list that, then you can see I've got all the, the information. Okay, so let's just clear my screen. Uh, now the next thing I'm going to do is actually run this using Node. So if you've installed Node onto your local machine, then you can do this. Uh, but this, first of all, will actually run it in Node on my machine and give you an idea of what the application actually looks like. So to do this, um, I need to, let's just check where I am. So I'm going to do a PWD and you can see the, the different uh, directories there. I need to be in this directory here called site. So I'm going to CD into site. And then if we list that, you can see there's uh, a few different files in here. So um, I actually then need to want to install this. So I'm going to use NPM to install. So I'm going to type NPM uh, install. It's going to install the, the program onto my computer. So it's actually downloading some bits and pieces that it needs. Uh, and now I can actually run it. So I can do uh, npm start. Okay, so what you can see now is that my application has started. So this is the code that I've downloaded. And this really is just to check that the code actually works. And you can see that the uh, application is listening on port 80. So by running this, it's actually built the, um, built the code into an executable and uh, it, through Node, it's created a, uh, a Node.js web server engine for me and it's now running. So let's go to my, let's go and see if we can actually run this. So if I type localhost and it was port 8080, and then look, there we go, the application is actually running. So this is what it looks like. You can see it's example health and uh, it's all simulated. It's, it's not a, it's an example application, there's no, real data in this. So I can sign into it. Basically, I can put anything that I'd like in here. There's no actual login credentials in there. But you can see that it's actually quite a nice little application. Um, you can scroll around in the map here. 
um, change some bits and pieces. Um, I think there's only one patient record in there. Um, but uh, but you, again, you can um, go through, have a look at it, you know, familiarize yourself with the, uh, with the application if you want to. There's some uh, interesting stuff in there and also some interesting settings and bits and pieces in there as well. Okay, so that's great. The application itself works. So let's just shut that down, go back to my window, and I'm going to do a control C. And there you go, you can actually see uh, I've now cancelled that. So if I go back to uh, localhost 8080, then it's it's down, it's not actually running. Okay, so the next thing we're actually going to do is run this within a Docker container. So again, this is where you need to actually have Docker installed and running on your computer. So let me just clear my screen again, and you'll notice that I'm still in this site directory. So this is where we need to do it. Right, so to actually um, run this in Docker, uh, one thing that I'm actually missing from here is something called a Docker file. So the Docker file actually tells Docker how to build the container and what things need to be in the container. So I need to create a Docker file. So, uh, so I'm just gonna create a Docker file. So I'm gonna uh, uh, type touch and then Docker file. So if I now do an nesting, you can see that I've actually got a Docker file in here. And now I'm actually going to add some content to this Docker file. So, um, so I'm just going to, so I'm using Vi because I'm on my uh, machine, but again, just use a, a text editor to do this. So what we actually need to have in this file is, is this. So these are some commands that are actually telling Docker how to actually build out the application. So this is, so that's the code that we need into this particular Docker file. So I'm just going to save that. And now what we need to do is actually uh, create or build the container before we can actually run the container. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't have a container uh, running on my uh, machine at the moment called Example Health. I'm going to call this um, All Example Health. So I'm just going to make sure I haven't got anything running at the moment so I don't have a, a, such a container running. So um, what I'm then going to do is actually build the container. So I'm going to type in uh, Docker uh, build, no cache, and uh, minus T. And I'm going to call this example, example health, and a dot so it builds it in this directory. So you can see it's now just building the uh, building the container for me. just let that run through okay so that's my container built now you might have seen that I've got a, um, a, a big red worn on here um, and that's not ideal but I'm, I'm just going to work with it for now I know that I know this will work uh, despite that warning by the way if you're wondering what the various docker commands are then uh, if I just clear my screen uh, if you type in docker then what you'll find is that it will actually then list um, all the various commands within Docker. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, um, but the Docker um, documentation is actually really good. So if you want to explore Docker in some more detail, maybe also to, to understand a little bit more about the commands that I just put into that Docker file as well, then uh, go and check out the documentation here at, uh, at uh, docker.com. Okay, so right now we have our container built. So now we actually want to run it. So I'm going to run the container locally um, so that uh, so that I can actually see it running on my machine. So I'm just going to clear my screen again and get rid of some of the clutter. And uh, then I'm going to type in the, um, the, the appropriate command. So as you can see, I've got uh, docker run minus D, restart always. Uh, I'm going to name, so this is the name of my container I want to run, so it's example health. These are the ports that I'm going to run it on, and again, it's uh, the, the name of the uh, the name of the service. So I'm just going to enter that, and I get a uh, I get a string return, which is the uh, basically the name of the container running on my system. So um, I, as you, as I mentioned, I've, I've got this running on port three thousand. So now, if I go to um, go to a new tab and I type in localhost three thousand. Then you can see that I've actually got my container running. So this is uh, the, exa the, the example health application running uh, in a container 
on my local machine. So, um, so basically, it's exactly the same thing. You can see it's all exactly the same. But now I've actually got it, as I say, running in a container rather than just on top of a node. So then if I want to actually stop the container, then all I need to do is type docker stop and then example health. And that should stop my container for me. So just give that a second. And uh, then if I just go and refresh this, you can see that it can no longer connect to the server. And that's because my, uh, my container is no longer running. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. So we've uh, we've created our Docker file and we can see that it runs locally. So again, if you wanted to uh, just have a quick look again at uh, the code that goes into the Docker file, uh, then you can see it on screen at the moment. Uh, there's nothing too heavyweight there, nothing too difficult. Uh, and similarly, if you actually want to go and uh, do this for yourself without looking at the videos, um, then take a look at uh, github.com slash James Belton IBM slash cubes my health and there you'll find all of the commands um, listed out and uh, again if you wanted to um, see where you needed to go to uh, download the, uh, the the code that we've just looked at then uh, again you can see that in my github site uh, at node s2i dash openshift and that's it for this video thanks very much for watching in the next video we'll actually see how to upload our docker container to a container registry Thanks again for watching and see you next time.